Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bocce Boys podcast. We got a huge show for you. The Yukon Huskies have repeated. They are the back-to-back men's national champions. We have that as well as Cal Perry going to Arkansas and the Masters, a tradition unlike any other. We'll get to all that and much more, but the Bocce Boys starts right now. Davis, welcome back to the podcast, dude. We have so much to get to. So much today, Ethan. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back as well. We took a couple extra days to record this just because of the national championship. And because of that, let's dive right into it. The Yukon Huskies are the back-to-back men's national champions, Davis. This is the fourth title in eight years for the Big East, uh, courtesy of the other two, my national Villanova Wildcats, of course. But the Big East on top again. Dude, this is another level of dominance that we've seen. Uh, last team to do this was the Florida Gators in 08, 09, I think it was. Uh, Correct. With, with Noah and Al Billy Horker. Donovan. And Billy Donovan, of course. Uh, so how are you feeling about this dynasty blossoming before our eyes? Yeah, to uh, hit on the soft spot first, yes, Purdue lost. Um, I was all over Purdue from the start of the tournament. Yep. And this honestly is how I could have also imagined this game playing out. <laughs> so uh, this is exactly what happened. Um, Ethan, if you look at the win probability right here, there was about 12 seconds where Purdue looked okay. And then they dropped. <laughs> and then they did terrible. Uh, yeah. Edie was decent. I mean, 15 for 25 from the field. Mm-hmm. But you know what's bad when he's taking hook shots from the foul line? I mean, this game was a wrap right when halftime came back. Um, yep. So I don't know. I, I think it was, a, it was a pretty underwhelming game in my opinion. Yeah. A little but bit. It was a pretty fun March madness. And honestly, Ethan, a lot of people might say they would love the Cinderella to get there. They loved NC state. Yeah. The two best teams play and we saw the best team win. And it sometimes it's hard to say I'm not, I'm, I'm not disappointed by this at all because I got to see the two best teams face off and I got to see the better team win. Yeah, seriously. And, I mean, if you really want to get more into it, these were the two best teams all season. I mean, UConn and Purdue feels like played, you know, patty cake with the number one uh, ranking the whole year, throwing it back and forth. But UConn, this whole tournament, man, they, just like last year, made themselves the more dominant team in every single game. Every single team that they was put in front of them, they were like, I don't know, Illinois, yeah, them and Terrence Shannon, nope, doesn't matter, they're going to kill them. Alabama, I don't know, nope, they killed them. It wasn't, you know, a slaughter, but they kept them at arm's length the entire game. And then last night, as you can see on the screen, they kept Purdue one for seven from three. And, I mean, they figured Edie out the second the second half got underway, like you said. Uh, Klingon did an amazing job defensively and offensively. And, man, the Huskies looked like an NBA team out there. Castle and Newton were – I mean, running the show, giving it to Klingon. Uh, Caravan was doing pretty well as well. No one really played crazy for the Huskies. It was just an all-around team ass-whooping that, I mean, you love to see from this kind of caliber of a team. There isn't one guy. It's it's Danny Hurley and his system. Yep, completely agree. Um, again, underwhelming game to watch, but – I'll take it. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I know yourself. I want to give you a quick applause um, that you won a lot of the brackets that you were in, a lot of the groups that you were in. You did very well. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if per- I was in a spot where if Purdue won, I probably would have won all of my brackets. But uh, you know what? It is how it is. And yeah, it's just what they do. You know, as a um, you know novice to say the least, I. Um, You have to be impressed with the fact that they've covered every single game, covered every single spread for the last two years. It's an insane stat that probably won't be replicated ever again. Um, Back-to-back champions covering every single spread. I don't know, Ethan, that's pretty crazy to me. And, um, yeah, congratulations to the Huskies and, and, uh, and honestly, the Big East because, you know, it shows how good the Big East was this year because UConn had some battles during the season. They sure did. 
I mean, Villanova had a very close game with them, their first matchup, but I don't want to throw Villanova's hat into this race. They didn't deserve it. Talking a little bit more about college basketball, Davis, Danny Hurley, he is now the back-to-back national champion coach. He's building that dynasty in stores, Connecticut. But it seems like that new opening in Kentucky might be luring him down there. Probably not, right? Probably not, but he's got to take that call, no? Uh, I would take the call. I would take the call, but – I would basically, if I'm if I'm Danny Hurley, I would literally be like, "Pay me twenty million dollars, I'll go." A and year, Kentucky's, yeah. Kentucky's like, ah, we don't have that budget, and you're like, "Yep, no, nope, I'm good." Uh, yeah. That's why they didn't resign this man on the screen, John Calipari. Calipari had an offer from Arkansas, and um, he went back to Kentucky actually and said, "Hey, make me an offer." They were like, "Nope, get yeah. out of here." Yeah. Flick, flicking the bug off your shoulder, basically, um, which is which is a great move for Kentucky, in my opinion. Uh, Uh, I don't know who's going to run the show there. But, Ethan, pretty crazy to say that Kentucky basketball and Alabama football both are going to see new coaches. Uh, I mean, these are probably – Calipari might be one of the most legendary coaches in the last 15 years in college basketball, and Nick Saban Saban the same for college football. So, very interesting to say the least. It really is. I mean, I think I sort of called this a couple weeks ago. we got to find that clip, but – um, it really did feel like the writing was on the wall with Kentucky and Cal Perry. The, the Kentucky fans have not been happy with Cal Perry for quite some time. And I saw that they haven't won a tournament game since like 2019 or something like that or gotten past the first round. It, it's been bad for the Wildcats recently, but you're right. Cal Perry is a great coach. And this is an Arkansas team that just lost their head coach, Eric Musselman, to the Trojans of USC. And they replaced him in a big way, and they probably made up for it. Uh, Cal Perry is a great coach. He's going to bring a lot of eyes. He's going to bring a lot of great prospects that, you know, Arizona has had some – Arizona, Arkansas has had some really good players recently. But Cal Perry is going to bring it to another level. And then also, let's not forget, Kentucky basketball is much bigger than John Cal Perry. I mean, whoever their next coach is, it doesn't matter. Whether it's, you know, Scott Drew or Baylor – uh, I think Nate Oates already took his head out of the ring and a couple other guys, but whoever it is is going to land in a really, really good spot because it's Kentucky basketball. I mean, there's only a couple unarguable blue bloods. It's like Kentucky, Kansas, UNC, and Duke. Like, those are the four, and this is a huge job opening. And like we said, Hurley's probably not going to take this, but every other coach besides Hurley should be watering over this opportunity. Penn State will get there as a blue blood. Um, I'm not – I'm not – I'm not dead yet. All Zero right. out of 10 joke. That was we'll terrible. There. Um, terrible. The Big Ten basketball will never be good again. 100%. And this this yeah. actually, the national championship continues the streak of, I believe it's now 22, like 22 or, or 24 years. Yeah, of a Big Ten team that hasn't won a national championship. Uh, but going back mm-hmm. quickly to what you said about Cal Party, um, about being a good coach, you can swing the fence on each on whether he's actually a good coach or not. Yes, I believe he's a good coach, but his focus is so much more than just March Madness and college basketball. He has come out blatantly and said his favorite day of the year is the NBA draft because he loves yep. seeing these guys take the next step in their journey, um, which is very his interesting. His main goal is getting these guys an NBA contract extension, not even a good rookie deal. It's getting Correct. these guys paid for the future. Which I think is a great option for a lot of these kids not in kentucky but not in kentucky i think i think this arkansas team is going to hit the transfer portal hard they're going to bring over some massive recruits and we've already seen the arkansas national championship numbers for 2025 move from 80 to 1 down to i saw 30 to 1 but i I think it's mostly sitting at 40 to 1 just because of this news Uh, ethan the transfer portal recruits arkansas is going to be a team that you can't mess with in the sec um, I think they're going to be right up there with Auburn and Kentucky uh, for, yeah, for, coming oh, yeah. for the coming years. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, that Calipari is going to Arkansas, which is an SEC team. I mean, he's going to hear it when he heads back to Lexington next year. Uh, speaking of Lexington, who is going to be their coach? I know Scott Drew, the head coach of Baylor, is very close with the AD of Kentucky. Um Billy Donovan, I just saw, said he's committed to staying in the Chicago Bulls organization for right now. Uh, as I said, Nate Oates already took his hat out of the ring. Who do you see being the Kentucky coach, just off, off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, personally, I would go with Scott Drew. Um, yeah. I think would he that, leave for that job? Yes, yes. I think this is a job you you leave in an instant 
You know what I mean? There's only yeah. a few jobs out there that you wouldn't take Kentucky over, and it's the three teams probably you listed earlier. It's Kansas, Duke, and UNC. Um, you're going to take this Kentucky job if you get the phone call. Um, yeah. I bet you Nate Oates did get the phone call. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I bet you Nato to Alabama got the phone call. Probably um, right away. I wouldn't be surprised if Jay Wright is getting a phone he call. He did. Or two. He already said no. He already said no. Correct. That's what I mean. So I actually didn't know he already said no, but I don't see him coming back for this no. job. Um, I, I'm gonna stick with Scott Drew, and I bet you he's not. There's there probably is lines on this somewhere. I bet you he's the betting favorite. Um, to be the next coach at Kentucky. And I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if we see it in the next week or so that it has uh, to be soon. he's, he's yeah. going to get a big deal. But we'll see. And I don't think Kentucky's dead at all. Uh, at all. I think this actually could help them long term. I, I agree. I agree. Like we said, they are the class of the Blue Bloods of college basketball. They will find a guy. Even if it's an assistant from Fordham, that guy will be good. They will get the recruits for him. They will get the resources. Kentucky will be fine. They will be fine. All right. Moving off of basketball, Davis, we have been talking about basketball for so long. We're getting to, we'll get into the professional basketball side soon. It's not quite playoff time yet, though. So it's a tradition unlike any other, the Masters. It is this weekend, Davis. Finally, the golf season feels like it's underway. I know, you know, there's a couple pay- or pay-per-views, a couple tournaments early in the year. Whoa, that get, whoa, the get, juices the flowing. get the wrestling stuff sorry, out sorry. of your mind. Come sorry, on. sorry. There's a couple of tournaments to get the juices flowing. The players always is a nice little appetizer for the golf season, but the Masters is the entree. It gets it gets the juices flowing. The spring is here. Like, come on, Davis. Like, I just want to hear this birds. graphic. I know it's just a graphic, but seeing oh. this just it's soothing to look at. I just want to. I just can't wait to turn the broadcast on on Thursday. Hear the music. See the camera shot mm-hmm. coming up the driveway, and just hear the birds chirping in the background. And yep. I'm not even trying to be poetic about it because it is exactly what embodies the Masters. Um, Ethan, it's Masters week. This might be one of my favorite weeks of the entire year. Um, it's right up there with honestly probably NFL Wild Card Week uh, weekend and March Madness. That first wow. those first two rounds. Wow, um, okay. I cannot wait for this, Ethan. Um, yeah. And we are seeing some insane players playing this this year. You know, we have the live guys that are still playing over here. Or, well, they're coming back, really, from mm-hmm. from live to play in the majors because that is still allowed at the moment. Um, and then they're going to end up merging pretty soon. But we'll get to that another day. Ethan, uh, we have a ton, ton of players who I think that can win this tournament. But we're seeing a guy sitting up here up top. No, ranks number one in almost every single the drive. defending champion. Wrong. John Rahm is the defending champion in the Masters. Um, oh, close sorry. though. Close though. Right. He is because right. the Masters went over to live. The Green Jacket went to Saudi Arabia for the last. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Last years. year, last year, Rahm was a PGA guy. Correct. So he was moved, it under the PGA banner. He moved in Octoberish, so it, it's still alive. It's still here, but. Ethan, we haven't seen numbers like this. A guy to win the Masters at plus 450 since you know who. Mr. Tiger Woods. Uh, you don't have to say it. Of course Ethan, I know who that is. Could this possibly be the beginning of a run that is Tiger-esque? I'm not saying Tiger Woods exactly. Tiger-esque. Because if Scotty can take down his second green jacket this coming weekend, we are heading toward the territory that we have seen before. <laughs> I mean, it's getting close to him being crowned the next guy. I feel like the golf media has been quiet on this on purpose for a while, not calling him the next Tiger Woods on purpose, not jumping the gun. But Scotty is doing all of this and winning all these tournaments despite being the worst putter on tour last year. Is that true? I think you told me that at a bar, and I feel like I dreamed it. Yeah, I mean, okay, so like college basketball, there's like 300 golfers that qualify in the like with their PGA cards. But yes, yeah, Scotty Scheffler ranked probably at somewhere between 200 and 220th. Um, wow. You're sitting wow. down there with guys who just got their card. Um, and a lot of it was his five to seven footers, ones that, you know, my, honestly, I'm not even trying to be funny. We struggle with as just amateurs and we just yeah. play golf yeah. to have fun. So bad. these guys are should be hitting those at a 95% mm. clip. Scotty yeah. was only hitting it right below 90% last year, which again doesn't sound like a lot, but you're putting that five to seven footer about 65 times a week. Um, on you know, if you're making the cut out of the 17, mm-hmm. 72 holes, it's gonna be tough if you miss a lot of those putts. So um that I think that's huge, but he's been really improving it this year. I think that's yeah. the difference. 
He's been improving it this year, and he has been at the top of every single leaderboard in the last six to eight weeks uh, on the PGA He's tournament. that good. He's he is that, that good. good. Correct. I mean, I don't want to jump the gun and be like, this guy's the next Tiger. But if he wins a green jacket this weekend, man, I mean, it's going to get hard to not – Let's say he was on a, a run similar to the guy below him. Rory was a couple of years ago before he kind of, you know, slowed down for lack of a better way of saying it. I mean, this guy, Scotty Scheffler, is that good. He His iron play is insane. I mean, low-key, one of the best drivers on tour. Saying low-key, like he hasn't won a bunch of tournaments. But, mm-hmm. I mean, he really is impressive. And especially the putting stat that you told me, it just continuously makes me even more impressed by how, what he's doing. But – this is a guy below him, Rory, that I have been wanting to see win a Masters for a couple of years now. He is just a green jacket shy of the Grand Slam. Uh, he is an all-time great player. He's just had – I don't, I don't want to say a rut because he's just – he's finished in so many top tens in the last ten years. He just can't close the door. And I feel like Rory gets a lot of love on these uh, you know, major championship favorites lists every single time, and he hasn't won one in a while, but – I like Rory, man. I do like Rory, but second hand pick, uh, besides Rory, Victor Hovland. Uh, he is at plus four thousand. Was absolutely insane last year during the Ryder Cup. One of the most underrated golfers in the world right now. Um, does not get nearly enough love, and I think he is going to be a very sleeper kind of guy to win the Masters this weekend. Yeah, he would definitely be one of my picks. Um, if you give me Except about four, something... if you give me about four or five picks, I'm picking Victor Hoblin. Um, I think you're getting good value on a guy who um, hasn't really done much this year already, but he's just been prepping for the Masters. He's been prepping for this moment. Um, so I think that he is a guy, and he was fantastic in all the majors last year. So mm-hmm. he's a guy I would definitely take a look yep. at. Um, I saw a great thing on Instagram. If you don't know. Betting lines and anything like that. If you but if you put ten dollars on Rory McIlroy to win the Masters, you will lose ten dollars. <laughs> he uh, he is. I don't know. He's he is in a rut. He has been yeah. in a rut uh, for the last few years, and he just can't close the Masters. I actually pretty sure he missed the cut last year. Um, but just going down this list a little bit, you're seeing a lot of live guys. You're seeing John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, mm-hmm. uh, Bryson DeChambeau, and maybe one of the hottest live guys on their tour right now, Joaquin Neiman, sitting there at 28 to 1. Um, but quickly, Ethan, I'll go through two or three of my picks, if you don't mind. Love Let's it. stick to the left side of the screen here. All right. Victor Hovland, we already talked about it. If you want me to go higher on the list, one of my favorite bets would be Xander Shoffley. Okay. Uh, like literally, literally higher on that list. Um, if you're watching he, on YouTube. He is basically the second. So Scotty Scheffler is number one in all these categories. Xander Schauffele is number two in like every single one. Uh, he's a guy that I think he he has a decent track record at Augusta, but he hasn't been able he's to He's always it been out. right there. He's yeah. always been right there. So I, I'm going to – I already took him. I think that he is a guy to watch out for. I think Brooks Kepka is another guy you can definitely watch out for. You'll see a good prop I have for him. Instead of winning the Masters, I actually like a different prop of his more. Uh, Ludwig Aberg, this is the first time he's playing um, the Swede. At Who? Swede. Yeah, you heard me. Ludwig Aberg. He is a stud. He's sitting there okay. at 30 to 1. Um, Ethan, this guy drives the ball like none other. Uh, his only his only deficiency, struggles to putt. I think that um, he is a guy to definitely watch out for early. I want to see a good Thursday, Friday out of him. Um, but – We'll see when it comes down to the weekend. Uh, but I think he definitely could be in the mix. Maybe betting him top 20 would be great. And Ethan, last one. Yeah. Let's go to the right, si- right side of the screen here. Okay. One of my favorite bets of this entire tournament. Okay. my my One of my father's favorite bets. A lot heard a lot of people talking about this. When we look at Masters champions in the past, you see a trend when it comes to lefties. Okay. You see a trend when it comes to lefties. Bubba Watson was fantastic at the Masters. Uh, he's won it twice. We saw Phil Mickelson win it. Um, we, even if we go way back in the past, uh, Mike Weir, I believe, is a lefty. Harmon? Brian Harmon. The man really? who is holding the British Open. I forget what it's called. I forget what it's Change called. That's such, a, that's such a – no, cup. no. It's, the, it's the something cup. Anyway, yeah, Brian cool. Harmon, Ethan, is a guy – I am stabbing at right now on some of these books. I actually grabbed him in a small parlay yesterday. Um, a hit, parlay I, actually, hit? 
I took the Dodgers over in total runs. Um, Harmon on Fandle. Uh, golf is a, this is a great bet- betting experience for you and the listeners too. Golf, you definitely have to shop for your numbers because you're seeing sixty to one here on Harmon on Fandle. You can get eighty to one really quickly. Uh, so that is definitely you should be looking at all your books. But I hit a small parlay with Harmon in it, so I actually have Harmon at about one hundred and thirty-five to one right now. Um, so he's a guy I am absolutely looking forward to. I think he has the balls to be able to do it. And I think that he, uh, he is the clutchness. I mean, we've seen him win a major already, so that's going to be my, mega. my pick He's sponsored by mega court, right? He is sponsored by mega court. And we're going to see, we're going to see about 20 waggles out of him when we when we're watching him come up on 18 with his a iron waggle on Sunday, we will see him waggle. Over 16 and a half times. <laughs> Huge waggle guy. Um, right. Davis, before we hop off this master things, there's one thing I've been dying to ask you about. Why the hell is Jordan Spieth's name so high on that list? Has he been playing well recently, or is it just because he's a defending champion? Or not he's, defending a former He's been champion? playing all right, but it, he's Jordan Spieth. I mean, yep, he, he, I he has, again, has a good track record here. I mean, we're seeing guys on, this, on either of these lists who have, are in better form than Jordan Spieth. Uh, currently, but Augusta's Augusta. Like some of these guys, like th- this is the first time Wyndham Clark is playing here. Wyndham Clark is in 20 million times better form than Jordan Spieth right now, but Wyndham Clark's never played at Augusta. Augusta's a different breed. Uh, so you, that's why you see a lot of these guys who have played a few times, have won or have top 10, top five finishes. That's what I thought. A lot higher up. Makes sense. I mean, I would love to sprinkle a little bit on Jordan Spieth, but like you said, Jordan Spieth is going to speak, especially on that 12th hole. We know that he will do that. Um, all right. Let's go to the next master slide. This is the highest number that Tiger Woods has ever been at to win the Masters. Tell me why I shouldn't bet it. Because... It's a great question. I mean, it is. It is. I mean, he hasn't played a round of golf on the PGA Tour since the Masters last year. Was it the Masters last year, or was it another major? I'm trying to. I didn't know. Yeah, it might have been the Masters last year. No, I think maybe, I, no. Wait, he may have. No, he played on the Zo. I think he played in the Zozo over the winter. But anyway, he withdrew. Um, mm-hmm. I don't actually know if Tiger Woods can play four rounds of golf consecutively without withdrawing at this point. I mean, we've seen it a bunch of times. We've seen him do it a bunch of times. And even one of my favorite bets, I hate it. I hate it. It's actually not on the screen right now. It's like minus 145 right now. Um, The hit for him to miss the cut. I mean, I don't know. I I won't actually do it, but I I can't wait to watch him. I can't wait to watch him. I I think he'll be sitting on his couch watching just like us on Saturday. Yeah. And good for him. He's a legend. I was hoping that wasn't the answer you're going to give, but I think you're right. I really do think you're right. Um, all right. Now, how about the you take us through these DraftKings stubs? Because I'm confused about this top one. Yep, quickly. Yeah, I know. It got cut off. Um, but this is actually one of my favorite bets every single Masters. I've done it the past few years. Ethan, it's top lefty in the tournament. Uh, Phil oh, okay. Nicholson is a guy I do not like. I do not like Phil Nicholson. Personally, okay. he doesn't like him personally. Personally, but I got to take personal bias out of this and be a professional. Okay. okay? Of course, this is a I professional think, podcast. I think I love Phil Nicholson to be the top lefty. I, you hate minus numbers, but it's minus 140. Ethan, I think this is I a fantastic, hate. fantastic bet. Uh, you're going up against, um, or wait, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. The lefties yeah. one is with Brian Harmon and Bubba gotcha. Watson down there, but I, I like Brian Harmon in that. I'm sorry. That was, a, that was a bad mistake. The top left one's top senior, actually. Yeah, I thought so. Top senior. Uh, Phil Nicholson in that going up against VJ saying Mike Weir for a couples. Um, and yeah, that's easy for Phil. Easy. He's the only one that's actually still playing real professional golf yeah, at the moment. Yeah, VJ uh, is out. I think that's great. Top lefty. Ethan, you heard me talk about Brian Harmon. I'm right back on the bandwagon. This is a plus number, so you'd probably like this. Plus 165 on Brian Harmon. Love um, it. And bottom left, Ethan – Top live player. Um, this is really weird. This is really weird. Okay. Because we saw earlier Brooks Kepka was pretty high on that list, right? Of t- who's gonna win the Masters. Yeah. And we didn't talk about him, but Bryson DeChambeau is a little bit farther down. Ethan, I think I may have found a loophole. <laughs> Why is Bryson DeChambeau five to one here, but Brooks Kepka six to one? 
I have no know. idea. And I love Brooks Kepka. That's a good question. Um, I, like I actually like Cam well. Smith. I like Cam Smith too, but Brooks Kepka is six to one. I I really like that, Ethan. Has Brooks gotten himself back on track recently? I think he has, right? Yeah, he's been playing pretty well on Liv. Um, I mean, the guy who's been playing the best on Liv right now is Joaquin Neiman, to be completely honest. Um, okay. But I do I do like Brooks. Um, I mean, he was just fantastic last year in all the majors. Uh, he was so good in the U.S. Open and the, or the PGA Championship, uh, which he won, and oh, yeah. um, the Masters last year where he came in second. Uh, Ethan, I'll take Brooks Kepka 6-1. All right, Davis. So I must ask, who is your rooting interest the entire tournament? Your main one is it Shoffley? It's very interesting. If I'm taking rooting interest into it, I, I just I, you love storylines. We know you love storylines. The storyline story for Xander Shoffley is that he's gonna go top. He's gonna be a top five, and he's not gonna win. Such a shame. Honestly, Again. the guy I've been following a lot recently um, is Ludwig Aberg. Um, I would love it if Ludwig Aberg wins. Uh, a Norwegian. Why have you been following Ludwig Aberg? What is he doing that's catching your eye? Uh, the way he drives the ball is just fantastic. And his okay. iron game, his ball striking is fantastic. Another guy who strikes the ball very well is Tommy Fleetwood. He has oh, a yeah. track record at the Masters. Um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind if either of them won or someone that's just like super hype. Like I wouldn't hate if Max Homa won. I don't think he's going to. Yeah. But you know what I mean? No, like yeah. someone like that. Mm -hmm. I agree. I definitely agree. I think this Masters are going to be super fun because, I mean, like we said, beginning of the golf season, but there wasn't really anybody that finished super hot last year. There's not really a hot hand other than Scheffler because it's just Scheffler right now. But it feels like this Masters is for the taking, and this might be the year where one of these favorites kicks it out. I don't know. We'll see. Go Rory. I'm rooting for Rory. I swear. That would be awesome if you finished the Grand Slam this weekend, but probably not. All right, Davis, I have a trivia question for you. Go to the next slide. What do all of these players have in common besides the fact that uh, they are all wearing red? Hmm. They're all righties. They're all righty pitchers. Uh, yeah, but that's not it. Tell me more. Mm, uh, oh, that's that's it. They don't have a UCL. None of them have a UCL. They oh. are all coming back from Tommy John surgery right now. It is that time of the year, Davis, where the season starts and everybody gets hurt right away, uh, especially pitchers. I don't know why. Uh, we are actually kind of talking a little bit about this, but why is it that this is happening more and more frequently? So there's a lot of different answers, I think, that the media will give you and doctors will give you and that I'm about to give you. <laughs> um, okay. First of all, I just want to go back. Not everyone has had Tommy John yet. Not all. Not everyone on this list is getting it yet. Spencer Strider might not get it. We'll see. Shane Bieber is yeah. definitely getting Tommy John, though. And so yeah, is Yuri is. Perez. Um, mm -hmm. But, Ethan, there's really two big factors in this. One, it's the sticky stuff. It's the sticky stuff that got banned. Um, the um, sunscreen and rosin and spider tech. A lot of these pictures, and if you haven't if you haven't seen it yet, you should go look up Tyler Glasnow's interview about it. Tyler Glasnow is another guy who just had Tommy John the past few years. He talks about how hard he has to grip the ball now um, on every single pitch, and it just puts so much strain on their elbows, um, especially when you're throwing some off-speed stuff. I mean, without the spider tech and what was legal, sunscreen and rosin, um, is putting so much pressure on them gripping the ball as hard as they possibly yeah. can to put the most spin on it. The second thing is about the pitch clock. I'm not a huge proponent of this, but the fact that the pitch clock is speeding these guys up and it's not get, leaving any room to rest, it's not, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'm on the side of the sticky stuff. I think that actually has had a big impact in it, but Ethan, these guys are also now throwing like 99, 99, 98 miles per hour is normal now, which is insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're starting it at like 16, 15, 17, 18 years old when their arms just are not developed for this. And then they get to the age that they're supposed to be just developing these muscles and the muscles are fried. They're all done. And that was what I read is that these like high school and travel pitchers before the college and professional uh, levels just don't care. And they're just like, throw as hard as you can. We need you to get that velo up. It's all about velo. When in reality, it's just, what about what happened to stuff like like having I mean, junk and you know throwing a great off speed pitch that meant something like 
Whenever, you know, Jamie Moore used to throw 88 on the black and it's heat. Yeah. Got everybody yeah. missing. But I don't know, man. It, it's It sucks to see these guys get injured right at the beginning of the year. And Tommy John is the worst injury in sports because it's the only injury you know that they're going to be out for over a year, at least. At least. ACL is right, going Bryce down. But yeah, not Bryce Harper. Uh, that is if you're hitting, if you're a hitter. But yeah, pitchers, exactly. if you're a pitcher getting Tommy John – I mean, it's not the career ender it used to be, but I mean, it takes more than a couple of years off your life than you are actually losing. I mean, it goes right to Shohei um, yeah. it, with LA now. I mean, he's playing, but he just got Tommy John. He's playing. I, I think he's. I don't know if he's DHing. I think he's DHing again. I think he is. Yeah. Um, but he's not pitching this year, and he actually might not pitch again. And if he does it, there's a chance he might actually be a reliever or a closer, which we would be wild. Um, Interesting, but. Um, quick update on the MLB. We're seeing the Yankees playing really well, which is a little surprising to some people, but you know, the downfall is coming, right? You have to think the downfall is coming at some point. Um, yeah, and they, let's be and negative. They Derek Cole right yeah, now. oh yeah. I mean, I still think the Yankees are still good in that Juan Soto is probably going to have a, you know, turn the clock back on the year, but I agree, man. The Yankees are, recently the Yankees have been a meme. Like, they just really yes. have been. Uh, they get really good and then they lose in the second round. And then Jairus Krabis tweets the video there or of David Ortiz saying, The Yankees lose, <laughs> it's the best thing ever. And I love it, but like, I mean, it's like clockwork every year. But you know, I think there is a little bit of reason to think that the Yankees might be real deal this year, just saying, yep, yep. And so, the what I would say, they, they're probably not the most surprising team up there right now, but we're only about two weeks in. Um, Ethan, the most surprising and most disappointing team. The most surprising team this year has to be the Pittsburgh Pirates so far. They are nine and three right now. Yeah. Um, and, and the Tigers. Let's throw the Tigers in there. The Tigers as well. They're seven and four. Mm -hmm. um, but I think both, I mean, both of those teams have been playing really well. And the Pirates to win the NL Central, I don't know. I don't know. I would think about it a little bit. But Ethan, this leads me right to my next slide, my next prop. We're going prop heavy yeah, today. I love it. Most disappointing team of the year. And the team, mm. I think, I've already had a bet on this prop. And I took the Washington Nationals, fewest losses or fewest wins <laughs> Ooh. of the year. Ethan, there's a team Ooh. up here that I talked about earlier this year that I really liked, and they are terrible so far. And they're sitting at a very juicy number. Ethan, I, oh, Marlins? Hate, I hated the Miami Marlins coming into this year. Wow. And they just lost their ace. You would go that amount out on a limb to see if the Marlins lose the most games this year? Ethan, 30 to 1. 30 to 1, and yes. they just lost their ace. The Oakland A's owner does not give a shit about their team. Let's not forget that. Correct. Like, he is sending players down because they are good. <laughs> and he's because openly, they wear wristbands, boycott wristbands. Yes. He's openly, like, suppressing the positivity in Oakland. That is going to get really hard to beat, especially for a bet like this. But the only thing is, I mean, I know it's baseball. Obviously, anyone wins any given day. But for the Athletics sure. just took a series from the Detroit Tigers. You just said we're one of the most impressive teams so far this year. I retract that statement. But it just happened. It's baseball. I but still retract the, it. I didn't know were, that. I'm going. I'm looking value wise here again. They do not have their ace anymore. Um, and who do they play next? They play the Yankees right now. Then they play the Braves. Then the Giants. Then the Cubs. Then the Braves. Ethan, that's how they wrap I up. I that baseball. the season just started. That's, but it's value because I'm I'm expecting them to lose a lot more in this number to get better by that time. Okay, all right. Yes. All right. Then they go on a stretch where they play Washington, Colorado, and Oakland. But I think I can go two or three weeks here where Miami is going to play playoff teams or very close. Miami to has teams. the ability to like get good too, but like not not legit like World Series good, but like screw your whole bet within a week, end of the season, kind of good. You know what I mean? Very, very possible. I think last year was a fluke. Um, I mean, this team on paper, it does not look very good. Louis Arise, a guy who was almost going to hit 400 last year, people thought. Uh, he's having a down start to the year. Jazz Chisholm's having a down start. Um, Brian De La Cruz is having a bad start. Yeah. I just want to see these guys pick it up, and I haven't seen it just yet. And again, a number that's 30 to 1, I'll just take a shot at it for now. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for that. 
But I just think these A's and the Rockies and White Sox are just going to be so bad. Like they're bad. The White like, Sox have already been uh, shut out four times this year. <laughs> yeah, the Rockies and White Sox. I don't know much about them. They just scream bad vibes, and then the A's are cursed vibes. Vibes you don't want unless you're getting a gajillion dollars. My intramural softball championship team from junior year of college might have had a better pitching staff than the Colorado Rockies, and the pitching staff was me with. Millions of fractures in my meniscus throwing underhand. Colorado Rockies have a really bad pitching rotation. Maybe the worst of baseball history. <laughs> I like these analogies. We should keep them going. Just I how like bad it. you were at points in your baseball career. Yeah. Yep. It happens, right? <laughs> happens, right? Just maxed out my velo at like 79. <laughs> Dude, you, you would totally need Tommy John. Let's just get the Tommy John, the preemptive Tommy John, so we can get it over with. Honestly, I'm just going to start throwing at a wall tonight. <laughs> you won't see yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That elbow is going to be screwed tomorrow. It's called Shohei. <laughs> it's called Shohei. Ethan. I was going to do it, but I'll let you do it. You did something phenomenal this weekend. I didn't do anything this weekend. You did something phenomenal. I didn't do anything this weekend. You finished My... your story. No. You finished your no. story this no. weekend, Ethan. Nope. I did not. Because when you go to the next slide, Davis, my – Universal champion Cody Rhodes finished the story. Throw it up. Nobody cares. That's fine. But it was awesome. Cody Rhodes finally beat Roman Reigns. He defeated for the title. Almost a four year reign comes to an end. Thankful of the American nightmare. Cody Rhodes. It's an emotional night at the link. I was there. I was there with our Bashi companion, Amir, whatever you want to call it. It was a magical night. Uh, Cody won, got to see The Undertaker, got to see The Rock. John Cena made an appearance. It was like Ethan was eight years old again. Uh, when John Cena's music came out, I was I was, I was, was a pig in shit. I'll say it. I was. I was having the time of my life. The Undertaker gong freaked me out. It was, it was sick. And I know Davis, as a new novice wrestling fan, what did you think? So this was the first wrestling show I've ever watched in my entire life. Like, actually watched. I found it pretty interesting and you picked up on the, I picked up on the storylines pretty quickly. I yeah, definitely good. was texting you while you were in the stadium getting oh, some yeah. insider information about like, Hey, what, 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 where's the beef here? Where's the beef yeah, here? Yeah, what yeah. are those, what are those sticks? Like I, I was very <laughs> confused about a lot of different stuff. Um, but I mean, it was really fun. It was electric. The crowd was yeah. crazy. Obviously you were there, but oh, speaking yeah. of something like that, just a question I'm now thinking of. Um, I haven't asked you that yet, so I'm very curious. That's it. WrestleMania. So you've been to a few very cool sporting events. You went to WrestleMania. You've been to the whiteout where you storm the field at Penn State. Uh, yeah. You know, someday you'll go to a maybe go to the Super Bowl or a World Series of like game. Do you where do you rank this in like what do you like your sport? It's not a sport. Maybe it might not be a sport. But where I, I do you rank this in like your entertainment slash sports like? Maybe not bucket list, but coolest things you probably have ever been to. Like, do, when you think this I is would, this is cooler than the Super Bowl? Do you, like, do you think this is cooler because the Super Bowl is a neutral field? Do you think this is uh, cooler than a Penn State Ohio State whiteout? Like, you know what I mean? So, where do you put this kind of in your tiers? This is definitely on a bucket list. I'll give you that. Definitely on a bucket list thing that I had to do before I hang it up eventually, whatever that means. But um, would I prefer to go to the Super Bowl over WrestleMania? Probably, yeah. Uh, this, Even though it's like a neutral field, though, that's the one thing with the Super Bowl that gets me. Like, uh, especially for like teams that I didn't care about, I probably choose WrestleMania over every year, just because every year there's something WrestleMania that piques my interest. You know, when the Vikings play the Bengals in the Super Bowl next year, I don't give a shit. But you know what I mean. But yes, ah, like this is the this is the Super Bowl of wrestling. It, it is what it is. Only once a year does wrestling get put on a football stadium. Uh, I mean, in terms of like where I rank this, it's it's right below the final four that I went to, but it's probably right above like the game seven of the NLCS last year, probably a little above the whiteout, to be honest. But I mean, it's right up there. It's yeah. right up there. Um, so I so didn't myself being there a couple of times. That was how how cool it was. So hypothetical then, like. I'm not a, someone who like has a ton of interest in going to a Super Bowl. Probably someday, but um, honestly, I'd rather the Eagles not play in it. I'd rather just go for an experience to be at a Super Bowl. Really? Absolutely, I, I just, wow. I mean, I'd rather be with eat my Eagles fans. Honestly, true, true. Um, but so, like, where would this rank hypothetically? Flyers, Stanley Cup, Game Seven against the Vegas Golden Knights this year in Philly. 
You taking the flight? You taking Game Seven in the Wells Fargo Center, or are you taking WrestleMania at the link? Game like, Seven, Game Seven. Come on. Okay, I mean, so you're taking game seven, the game, Stanley Cup. Like you're taking you're taking a Game Seven at home over WrestleMania for your teams, but maybe not as much like. Yeah, a neutral court event or like a yeah. non non championship. I'll take my sports teams over wrestling, but anything that's not my teams, I'll take wrestling over. Okay, understood. Yeah. And, I mean, and, uh, it's yeah, getting to I, that point where it's like NFL, wrestling, NBA, basketball, whatever you want to call it. Like wrestling is probably my favorite sport. It's getting close. Is it a but, sport? You know, now? Yeah, it's sports entertainment. It's, it's, it's sports entertainment. Pro wrestling sport. It's real to me, damn it. It's real to me. <laughs> if this video but, gets 10 likes, Ethan, yeah. and I, Ethan and I will rent a ring. <laughs> Start our storyline. <laughs> yeah, if you if you get this video to 10 likes, me and Davis will do a wrestling match. And we'll post on Watch <laughs> Voice. I will I'll show up and like we'll do it like just like always sunny. We'll rent a bar, like a bar, get a ring, we'll come out with the being the trash man and shit. It'll be fun. We should pitch that to sponsors. <laughs> yeah, if we, can, if we can get this video to 20 likes, we'll say 20. We'll do a wrestling match and put it on the channel. Uh, I love it. <laughs> all right. Well, that was our show. I think I think the story is finished. All that good stuff. Thank you for paying attention. We will be getting more consistent with putting videos out as the summer gets closer. We are busy just like you guys are, but we appreciate every single person who takes the time to watch all of these videos. I've heard a couple people tell me stuff that they picked up at the end of these podcasts. So I really appreciate anybody. Shout out Joe Chum who watched the last long one that I know of. We really appreciate it. Share, like, subscribe, you know, talk to your friends about the Pachi Boys. Send in the group chat, send in your Instagram chat, you know, just get these things liked. We need some views, just a couple more views. Help the boys out just in a small way. Uh, first post, first repost on the Instagram story gets ten dollars. Not Joe. Uh, oh, Ethan wins yeah. his brackets and then he yeah. starts dishing out money. Oh. oh yeah, oh yeah. But no one's gonna listen to it, so it's all right. But that was the Botch Boys podcast. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>